Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Soul Tribe Mama, aka Jessica. I'm so happy that you guys are here. If you're new, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and don't miss out on any more motherhood content, whether it's style, we do pregnancy, postpartum, labor and delivery, newborn, and really any age at all. Anything that has to do with being a mama, is on this channel. So if you are interested in that, if you are a new mama, I congratulate you. I'm so happy that you're here. If you are a mama like me that has multiple children, maybe you're pregnant again, or maybe you're just wanting to brush up on some things because your child is at a certain age, I'm glad that you're here as well. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, that helps me out a ton. All right, y'all, so we are going to restart our mom hacks series. I started this series a while back. Some things happened in my personal life. I didn't put out very much content over the um, Christmas New Year era. So we are going to get right back into the mom, mom hack series. And this one is going to be on teething. I have had tons and tons of you mamas out there asking me about teething tips and tricks, about weaning tips and tricks. And again, y'all, you can always leave your suggestions down in the comments or you can DM me here on Instagram. I'll leave my handle here for you guys. Um, and let me know what's going on in your life. What are the things that you need help with? And I could probably make a video on it <laughs> and help you guys out. Now, again, I am not a doctor. I am not a um, licensed to do anything other than I'm a YouTuber, I'm a mama of four, um, I'm 35 years old, and I have a little bit of knowledge, but there's still tons of things that I'm learning, even from you guys in the comments section and from other mamas. So just because it worked for me does not mean it's going to work for everybody. Everybody is different, every baby is different, every mama is different, every lifestyle is different, okay? We are all different. So before we even jump into this, just know these are my tips and tricks, things that have worked with me. And actually some of these things have worked with some of my kids and some of them only worked with the other half of my kids. Like you never know. I want you guys to be prepared if this is what you need and you know, get a pen and pencil to write these down. I will have them up on the screen for you guys. I have 11 tips and tricks for you guys for today's video. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get into teething mom hacks. Number one teething mom hack is going to be, you are gonna need tons of bibs. And my bib of choice is the bandana bib. Number one, they come in great color schemes, especially if you're a mama like me that likes neutral colors, not super bright colors or patterns. You're not into patterns. You can find them on Amazon. There's lots of boutiques, even on Etsy that sell them and they're not very expensive at all, but you need to have a lot of those on hand. Now, if you use a regular bib, that is totally fine, but make sure that it's cloth because you're gonna be using it. Not only is it going to be catching the drool that's coming onto your child's chest or clothing, but you're going to be using it to wipe their face constantly. The more you wipe that drool off their face or food or breast milk or formula off of their face, the better. Because the more that that moisture stays on there, that's when you start noticing a rash around their mouth or you start seeing like almost like pimples looks like pimples on, under their bottom lip or maybe above the top lip, it doesn't matter, but you'll start seeing that happen. Make sure that you have a bib on your baby. I actually, especially with my daughter, I bought bibs that matched her outfits. So a lot of really, really cute, very aesthetically pleasing. Some were really pretty lace bibs and I only used them for teething because I knew that I wasn't gonna get food on them and ruin them. It was just gonna be some drool on them that I could just, you know, hand wipe off. And I got some of those from a shop. I think they're on Instagram, but they have an Etsy shop and they are gorgeous, y'all. Gorgeous, gorgeous bibs. Number one rule, always have a bib and it needs to be cloth. Number two is giving your baby or toddler Tylenol at nighttime. Now you can give your baby or toddler Tylenol during any time of the day if they seem like 
to the point where they're just so much, you can tell that they're just in so much pain that they can't handle it anymore. They need something to help them get through that pain, to take the edge off. But at nighttime, it can get worse and it's gonna make it a lot harder for baby to sleep, which means you as mom or dad are not gonna get any sleep either. So right before bed, giving them the right dosage. If you're not sure because of the weight and height and all of that, ask your pediatrician, especially also for your baby's age because if you do have an infant, they do make infant Tylenol, but I know some parents are a little weary about that. Tylenol is okay to give to your baby, but again, ask your pediatrician if you're scared or nervous. They will tell you exactly how much to give your baby. Give it to them, you know, like 10, 15 minutes, almost 20 minutes before they're getting ready to go to bed. And then that way it hits them right when they're about to go to sleep so that they can sleep soundly through the night, not in pain. And now I know like sometimes Tylenol can only last for four to six hours. So then, you know, once it's gone, baby's probably going to wake up again. You can ask your pediatrician, you know, after those four to six hours, can I give my baby another dose? Do I just not do that, <laughs> you know, and just get up with baby, whatever it may be. Again, every parent is different, but Tylenol definitely helps get that edge off for them. Okay. Number three is going to be if you are breastfeeding or formula feeding is totally fine. This this applies for both of y'all. So you're gonna wanna make some uh, breast milk or formula teething passies. Now these are almost like popsicles for babies. So they're small enough so baby can hold them or maybe if your baby's not old enough to hold them, it's almost like a passy that you can put in their mouth for them to suck on and kind of gum on. And it's um, some of them come in a popsicle mold. If not, as long as you have something to set the passy in, you just pour the breast milk or the formula in there, you put it in the freezer overnight, and I definitely would have a few of them in there, not just one, because you know, once they use one, if they need another, you don't wanna have to wait hours and hours or overnight for it to freeze, but you just pop one of those guys out, give it to baby, and then while they're chewing on it, the coldness is going to numb their gums, which helps with the pain, but then at the same time, they're getting kind of like a treat. Now, the second part to that, or the B part to that, is you can also do frozen fruits or frozen veggies. Now, I opt for fruit just because, you know, that it tastes better. Most babies are gonna want like strawberries or watermelon or whatever, something like that. Like that they have the passies that um, are silicone with the little holes in them you can put some frozen fruit in there some frozen watermelon and then that way once they're chewing on it you can you know that they're not going to choke on any kind of chunks that get pulled off by accident they're just getting the juice from it but they're also getting that coldness and then being able to chew down or bite down on something definitely helps relieve the pain as well all right, number four is going to be teething wafers or crackers. If you've been to any store in the baby aisle where they have the baby food and the baby fruit bars and stuff, you will see these teething wafers or teething crackers. Now, obviously, if your baby is not to the age where they're eating finger foods, opt for the wafers. They do have actual like cookies or crackers for teething babies, but those are meant for babies that are all already eating like solid foods and able to eat um, kind of like baby lead weaning. They still will melt in their mouth, but again, they're just bigger and chunkier. So just in case your baby takes a bite out off of it and a big chunk comes off, if they're not old enough to be able to know what to do and swallows it and chokes, obviously not the best idea. So the wafers are great because they melt pretty quickly. They come in tons of different flavors. Plus they come really, really long. So if your baby is young, they're easy for them to hold onto themselves, whether it's one handed, two handed, and they can kind of just munch away. And again, they're getting a really good treat at the same time. Okay. Number five is going to be Wellaments teething oil. Their oil, y'all, is amazing. Out of the four babies that I've had, I have tried tons of teething gels and tons of teething oils, and I was always like, this is not working. Like, I don't even know what this is for because nothing has happened. <laughs> there has been no difference. But Wellaments, their teething oil 
works y'all and there are two ways that I would say you could do this so number one is you could put it on your finger stick your finger in there and then rub it on their gums and their teeth or you can actually dab it onto their teething toys so when they are whether you know whatever toy it is that they seem to love to chew on I would dab it all over there so while they're chewing on it they're getting that oil onto the gum area and you know kind of getting a two-in-one there they're chewing but at the same time they're getting that pain relief as well from the oil so those are two different ways but of all of the products that I've tried Wellaments is my absolute favorite and not even only for teething oil but for everything I mean their immunity pops their throat pops they have uh, their whole line is amazing and it's all healthy it's all good for your baby you don't have to worry about chemicals and all of that now I will say make sure no matter what products you buy from Willamance make sure that you're reading the directions because some of their products you do need to refrigerate because they are not filled with chemicals so their shelf life is not very very long but other than that I think they are amazing okay so number six is going to be taking a washcloth putting it in some water making sure the whole thing is full of water wring out some of that water not a ton you want it to be damp and then in the middle of it i would either put baby pureed food um, or you could put like yogurt in the middle kind of twist it so it looks like a little ball and then stick that in the freezer. So the next day when baby is teething, whether it's in the morning, the afternoon, maybe it's snack time, but they seem to be in a lot of pain and they're drooling a lot. You take that out and you give that to them. And again, kind of like the freezer pops and the wafers, when they're chewing on that washcloth, because it is frozen, the coldness numbs it, the food that they taste tastes good to them they love it and then not only that but the texture is different a lot of different textures are great for teething babies so whether it's a washcloth whether it's silicone whether it's mesh you know I mean there's so many different materials and things that they can chew on so the washcloth one I think is great now B part to this is going to be a spoon so if you have like your regular you know big old spoon that you use to eat your own food with if you take that spoon and put it in the freezer or the fridge and then take it out and give it to baby again it's a different type of texture Texture. not all babies and toddlers like this some do though so I would definitely try it out with your baby if you've tried some other things and notice they don't like those use a cold spoon hand it to your baby and that way you know they can chew on the spoon part they can chew on the handle part again it's cold it's a different texture it's hard and when something is really hard and like pushing on the gums that releases something in the brain for the pain to come down i don't know exactly what that is i'm not a scientist but i have heard that and read about that so those both are great for baby. Okay, this kind of goes into what I was just talking about. Number eight is going to be teething toys. Again, textures. Wooden toys, you've got your silicone toys. There are so many different types and I would love to sit here and tell y'all like this toy and this one and this one, these are the perfect ones. But the problem is is that not every baby likes to chew on the same kind of toy. There's the giraffe. I had that one for a while and one of my babies liked it and all the rest didn't take it they hated it they threw it on the floor they could have cared less I had the itsy ritzy circle with the little rattle um, rainbow that you can chew on one of my kids liked it my other baby hated it there is the Ryan and Rose they have a lot of cool different ones even their utensils actually are great because they're long and thick so it's easy for baby to hold and on each each side one side kind of looks like a circled fork that one worked really great for my baby because he could really chew on it and mess with it they can chew on any part of it so there's a lot of different things again that spoon comes in handy and the other thing I would also say is baby toothbrushes so if you go down the baby aisle you will see tons of different types of toothbrushes for baby that you can start using with them and those are actually great as well 
for teething babies. Not only to introduce them into brushing their teeth and what it feels like, but to help them with their teething and their gums. There's one that looks like a banana, so baby can hold it as well, but you can also use it to rub on their gums. There's one that you stick on your finger and it's got like little bristles on one side and on the other, and it is kind of like a silicone, and you can take it and just rub it up and down their gums all over the place. I have that one and Knox really likes that one. I'm trying to remember the other ones, but really any type of baby toothbrush or introduction to a toothbrush is great for you. Now just make sure that the one that you are using is big enough to for you to use and then to give to baby. Like that one that I stick on my finger, I wouldn't give that to Knox, even though he's not an, totally an infant, he's getting into toddlerhood. He's still putting things in his mouth and it's small enough for him to choke on. So that's the thing that I would I would use myself. I would not give that to him to do himself and to like, you know, try to brush his own teeth or rub his own gums. Just make sure that you are looking out for that and that the pieces that you give them are not too, too small. Okay, so number nine is going to be amber necklaces. Again, this is one of those that it may work for your baby or it may not. When I first saw these, I actually got one gifted to me and I was like, what is this for? I don't get it. So it's just a necklace to put on my kid to look cool? I don't know. And then I read about it and I was like, what? This is crazy. I put it on my kid and it worked, y'all. It literally worked. And not only that, but it's an accessory. It does look really cute and I love the color because whether you have a boy or a girl, it looks really cute with all of their outfits. So I definitely recommend looking into those amber necklaces for your babies and um, they're small enough. They're not gonna, I definitely, I don't know that I would, you know, let your baby sleep in it overnight. I would take it off before they go to sleep just for, you know, choking hazards, just in case, you never know. You want to be on the safe side, but during the day when you're with your baby, put it on them and see if it works for them or not. And now this is also something, you know, you want to add these things together. It's not like you want to do just one of these that I'm talking about and then say, well, that didn't work. So let me get that one out and let me try a different one. Try multiple ones throughout the day. Okay, number 10 is gonna be switching up their activities. Now this technically is not going to help with their gums, but it's gonna help their mind. If they're sitting in one area and they're in pain, it, I know this even for me, for myself. If I'm in pain, I don't wanna sit in one spot. I wanna move around. Sometimes it helps me to be outside or to be doing something different, to get my mind off of that pain, to do just, so that I can think about something else for a minute. And again, it may not last long, but put your baby in the stroller, take them outside with the teething toy, um, put them in a jumper to do something so that their legs and their arms, things are moving, their brain is working, and it's thinking about something else other than my mouth hurts, my teeth hurt, whatever that the case may be. Okay, now number 11 is going to be massage. And I'm going to link a video for you down below. They have, it's super short, it's only like five minutes long and they will show you exactly how to do this massage. But there is a massage that you can do on your baby's face and gums to help them with teething. Now, the number one step would be Number one, make sure your hands are clean. You're gonna do a smile and you're just gonna have a gentle pressure that kind of rubs right here and right here on baby and we're gonna do it a couple times. And really all it is is that pressure pushing on the gums helps them. Number two is going to be taking two fingers and right here where your jaw opens and closes, when baby's teething, they're probably gonna be like chomping on a lot of things. Their jaw's gonna be moving a lot. This tension right here can actually make the pain worse. So taking your fingers and rubbing them like this in circular motion on your baby and trying to just get that tension out can also help as well. Okay, now I do wanna say that um, teething can start as early as three months old and it can go all the way to two years old. So there is a long period of time depending on when your child gets their teeth. I mean, I had some babies that got teeth at six months and I had some babies that didn't get their first tooth till like they were a year and four days old. So it just depends. Sometimes you'll ba your baby will get one here, one there, one here, one there, and then you'll have a baby that gets like five all at once, which is 
horrible. And then when you talk about getting those molars in, ooh, girl, that is like, ooh, it is a lot. So I just wanted to throw that out there if any of you mamas didn't know that already. And don't ever think, oh my God, my child's behind because they don't have teeth yet and they're already one year old. Your baby's teeth will come in when they are supposed to come in. I actually had a dentist tell me that the longer it takes your baby's teeth to come in, it means that their roots of their teeth and their teeth themselves will be stronger. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but that is what they told me. Another thing that I would like to add into this video is breast milk can be a great salve. So if your baby does have a rash around their face, you can actually put dab a little bit of breast milk and just kind of rub it around there not a lot you don't want it to be like soaking wet because that again can cause rashes because of it not getting dry enough now make sure you've dried it off you've dried all the their their saliva off or food or anything else and you can dab a little bit of breast milk around their rash breast milk is great for butt rashes for eczema i mean there's so many benefits to breast milk so if you do have breast milk on hand you can definitely use that to try to help if your baby already has a rash around their mouth from too much saliva and teething all right y'all that is it for this video i hope my tips and tricks have helped you guys if you have any more definitely let us all know down in the comments because i know other parents we all talk down in the comments i've seen other moms talk back and forth about what they've learned added to what i've talked about so definitely do that and i would love to know some as well because knox just got a ton of new teeth and i know that the molars are next and that is gonna be h-e-l-l you know it so let me know down below again don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up make sure you subscribe if you're new and i will see you guys on my next one bye